straightforward. Um, it just takes a little bit of processing. It's not bad. It's kind of like Hess's Law, where you eliminate some things, but it's really not even that complicated. You don't have to do any math with it. It's a process by which a reaction occurs. Elementary reactions. The one we used before where we rearranged, uh, we isomerized uh, methyl isonitrile. Remember that equation? We just kind of rearranged the N and the C. Another one would be this. Reaction of uh, nitrogen monoxide and ozone to form nitrogen dioxide and O2. Both appear to occur in a single event or step called elementary reactions. So if you look at this, you think that this combining with this is gonna make this and this. That's how you've always been taught. Well, in reality, um, those ste there's steps that occur in order to make those things happen. And you're gonna have to uh, talk about those a little bit, all right? So the number of molecules Uh, that participate as reactants participate uh, sorry about that as reactants defines the molecularity right um, defines its molecularity so what is it what is it going to make this is where we're talking about its Molecularity, how many molecules do we have? Molecularity, right? So if we have a single, right, a single molecule involved, right, I'm going, right, single molecule involved, like we did with iso, uh, excuse me, a methyl isonitrile, a single molecule involved, what do you think it is? You should know, you read it. Unimolecular, all right? Unimolecular, all right? So that would be like the methyl isonitrile. There's only one thing there. If I have two reactants, what do you think it's called? It's gonna be tough. Not di, bimolecular, right? And very rare, so in this case, the NO plus O3, that's bimolecular, all right? That's bimolecular. Um, now, if you have three reactants, it is called termolecular. Right? There's never going to be any more. Now, a big note for this, it's far less probable that this will ever happen. Far less probable than the first two. All right? Far less probable. So whenever you talk about term molecular, just understand nine times out of ten, probably not going to happen. Okay. All right. So, what are we talking about? All right, multi-step mechanisms. All right, so multi-step mechanisms. The net change represented by an equation often occurs by a multi-step mechanism. All right, so this is the net change. All right, the net change is represented that change of an equation, all right? So let's say I have this equation. NO2 gas plus carbon monoxide makes nitrogen monoxide and carbon dioxide. All right, so basically it looks like I took an oxygen off of nitrogen dioxide and I added it to carbon monoxide and got you know those other two. So I took one off and added it to another. So here's the deal, below 225 degrees Celsius, the reaction appears to proceed in two elementary reactions. Now, you don't ever have to know what they are. You don't have to predict them. You don't have to make them. 
you're just going to be given the information and you have to derive what it means. All right, so what happens? So two elementary reactions, both are bimolecular. All right, so they're both bimolecular. All right, so this is what they look like. NO2 plus NO2 makes NO3 plus NO. And then from there, NO3 plus CO is going to make NO2 plus CO2 gas. All right, so I know those are all gases. So they're both bimolecular, and that's a two-step mechanism. Now what you need to do to very simple, this is what I'm talking about, Hess's law. This is the original equation, right up here. All right, this is the original equation. What you need to do is just cancel out like terms to add them up to make sure that they equal the original equation. So let's take a look. Is there anything that we can cancel out that's on the left and right side? All right, this NO2 and what? This one, what else? NO3 and NO3. Is there anything else we can cancel? Okay, so all we do is re rewrite it. Does it equal the original equation? Yes. Okay, good. So what happens is then the overall process matches up. Anything that is made and then consumed in the next, right? This was part of the original, so we're not worried about that. This guy right here, what do you think we call that? Intermediate, all right? If it's made in the first step and consumed in the second, it's an intermediate, all right? All right, so let's try one. All right, so this is what I have. Conversion of ozone into O2. And these are the steps that they gave me. O3 gas makes O2 gas plus O gas. And I have O3 gas plus O gas makes 2O2 gas, all right? First thing I want you to do is determine molecularity. All right, so what is the molecularity of this one? All right, so the first one, is unimolecular. All right, now let's do another color here, that color. What about the molecularity there? Bimolecular, okay, so that's pretty easy. You can already answer that on a multiple choice question, right? Pretty easy. All right, now B, I want you to write the equation for overall reaction, all right? So what are you gonna do? Add them up, cancel out, all right? Anybody have what you would get? Okay, say it. 203 gas. Oh, sorry about that. Right. Yields. Three o two. All right. So let's make sure everybody knows what we're doing. So you took this and you took that. You got rid of this and this because they're on the other side, and you added up those two. Right. Well, that's pretty easy. That's the overall equation. And last, identify an intermediate. I'm writing it before you probably already have the answer. What is the answer? What? 
What is it? What? Oxygen. I usually say uh, atomic oxygen, all right, is the one. All right. So that means that for next class, our quiz, we're going to make it a quiz because I still have I still have a little bit to do on this. All right, so the quiz will be on kinetics, every order, every order, Arrhenius, and beginning of mechanism. I have some problems here for you to do, so you can get a uh, hundred on the exam. Where's my recorder? Tell me I'm not.